up. I forgot to place a delivery order. You start cooking now. That's what my mother-in-law Catherine blurted out on the day we were supposed to have a family dinner with relatives. She had promised to order delivery for the event. Enough food for 10 people. Expecting me to whip up a meal for that many people on the spot is ridiculous. But arguing with Catherine would be a waste of precious time. So I got to work. My name is Mary. I'm 33 and work in a restaurant. My girlfriend owns the restaurant where I work. I'm married to John, a man two years my senior, whom I met through work three years ago. John is incredibly kind and treats me well, so life is good. The problem is Catherine, who dislikes me. When John and I first moved into our new home, my parents-in-law helped us. To thank them, I cooked dinner. My father-in-law David praised my cooking, saying, This is really delicious. Mary, you're an excellent cook. I was genuinely pleased and thanked him with a smile. Catherine didn't like that David praised me. She snapped. Showing off your cooking skills when you're just an amateur. Don't get carried away. What a snobby daughter-in-law. I was shocked. I had never heard such harsh words from Catherine before. From that day on, she took a dislike to me. Thankfully, we didn't interact much with the in-laws after moving because they live far away. But whenever we did visit... Catherine would sarcastically say, Mary, will you cook for us? You're good at it, right? What delicious dish will you treat us to today? I didn't want to cook in front of Catherine anymore, so I'd suggest, Oh, I'll pass on cooking today. Should we buy something instead? But then she'd explode. How dare you? Who do you think you are? Just cook. So I had no choice but to cook every time. And it would have been bearable, if she just ate without complaining. But she always said, this is not to my taste, making the experience truly miserable. I dreaded going to the in-laws because of Catherine, who acted like an angel in front of David and John. It's so thorough that it can be said to be perfect. She never said anything sarcastic about me in front of David or my husband, and always when they weren't looking. The other day, I couldn't stand the stress over Catherine and finally told David and my husband about Catherine's misdeeds, but they were both skeptical, of course. She was so convincing that when I finally told David and John about her behavior, they were skeptical. But John trusted me, so we started avoiding visits to the in-laws. Then one day, Catherine called. She said some relatives were coming over and they were hosting a dinner at the in-laws. It was more of a, you must come, than an invitation, but I decided to consult John first. John said we didn't have to go, but one of the relatives, Henry, had been kind to us, so we decided to go for his sake. When I told Catherine, she said, good, we're expecting a lot of people, so I'll order delivery. I'll handle the reservations. I was relieved. If she was ordering delivery, I wouldn't have to cook. But you'll have to help clean the house she added. I agreed. On the day of the dinner, John and I arrived at the in-laws in the afternoon to help clean. That's when Catherine dropped the bomb. Oh dear, I forgot to place the delivery order. What are we going to do? I frantically called nearby restaurants that could deliver, but because it was last minute and for 10 people, they all turned us down. Time was ticking, and it was soon time to pick up the relatives. Catherine and I decided to buy some pre-made salads and chicken from a nearby supermarket, while John and David went to fetch the relatives. The moment the front door closed behind our husbands, Catherine started boiling water. To my surprise, she said, Pre-made food is so bland. You can make everything from scratch, can't you? Her mocking smile filled me with both anger and suspicion. Did you intentionally forget to place the delivery order, Catherine? I thought about it, but time was of the essence. I considered walking out, but I couldn't let down Henry and our husbands who had gone to pick up the relatives. Reluctantly, very reluctantly, I agreed. I quickly planned a menu in my head and dashed to the local supermarket to buy ingredients. I didn't have time to compare prices. I just grabbed what I needed for the recipes that came to mind. If Catherine had intentionally skipped the delivery, 
she'd surely criticize me for using what was already in the house. So I even repurchased the seasonings I usually use. When I returned to the in-law's house, laden with bags, Catherine was leisurely sipping coffee in the living room. My, you've bought a lot. I'm sure you'll make us lots of delicious dishes. What's with that face? I'm letting you use my kitchen, so get cooking. I was infuriated by her tone that I considered dropping everything and leaving. But I swallowed my anger and started cooking, not for Catherine, but for Henry and the other relatives. As I hurriedly prepared the meal, Catherine would occasionally come in to criticize my taste, my presentation, and more. When I asked where certain kitchen tools were, she just laughed and didn't tell me. <laughs> if I found them myself, she'd say, You're rummaging through my kitchen like a common thief. I was furious, but time was running out, so I focused on cooking. Finally, the meal was ready. I looked at the clock. The husbands would be back in less than ten minutes. I felt a sense of relief, but then Catherine came over to inspect the dishes. I'm so glad you made it in time. I was worried we wouldn't have anything to offer our guests. <laughs> she laughed, implying that I was slow and inefficient. I was about to say, the whole reason we're in this mess is that you didn't order delivery. When she clapped her hands and looked at me with a smile. Well, you've served your purpose. You can leave now. I was stunned. Not a single word of thanks? And now this? Catherine let out an exaggerated sigh and shook her head as I stood there speechless. <sighs> Do you even know what today is? It's a day for our family to gather and eat. It would be strange for you, a daughter-in-law, to be there. You're an outsider. Were you planning to eat with us? How presumptuous. I had a lot to say, but it all vanished. I couldn't waste another second on this woman. Understood. I won't come back again. As I prepared to leave, Catherine watched me with a malicious grin. I texted my still absent husband and left the in-law's house without looking back, heading home. I asked my husband to convey my thanks to Henry and told him I would never visit the in-laws again. My husband, now aware of the situation, was furious but agreed for Henry's sake. Three hours later, Catherine called. I ignored it, but she kept calling, so I blocked her number. Then, my husband called. First, he confirmed that he'd thanked Henry, which was a relief. He then told me what happened after I left. Catherine explained my absence to the arriving relatives as a sudden illness. She then served the dishes I'd prepared, claiming them as her own. My husband, who knew the truth, was furious and David also realized that the food was unlike Catherine's usual fare. He tries desperately to pursue Catherine in front of his relatives. Henry took one bite and immediately said, This tastes like Wilson's restaurant. You're saying you made this? Catherine stumbled over her words as Henry grilled her on the ingredients and the dish names. Finally, she admitted, Actually, I forgot to place the delivery order, so I had it delivered from that restaurant. But then another relative chimed in. That restaurant doesn't do delivery. Cornered, Catherine finally snapped. Fine, I apologize for serving food from such a cheap restaurant. Henry and the others were stunned. That's a high-end restaurant we only go to on special occasions, Henry retorted. And then the relative said, Wilson's restaurant is a high-end place we go to for special occasions. And didn't you know Mary is training there to take over from her grandfather? Catherine had mocked me as an amateur cook, but I'd been working as a chef at a high-end restaurant. I may not yet be on par with my grandfather, a master chef with 15 years of experience, but I certainly know more about cooking than Catherine. I had clearly told her where I worked and that it was my grandfather's restaurant. Her mistake likely came from confusing it with similarly named local restaurants. My grandpa's restaurant had been a local favorite for years. There are few other places around here that have also adopted the chef in their names, trying to ride on its coattails. You'll find places like Wallace's Restaurant and Watson's Restaurant, so maybe that's why Catherine got confused. In today's world, you can find all sorts of information online, but my grandpa despises media attention 
and turns down all TV interviews. The restaurant doesn't even have a website. Reservations are only taken over the phone, so it must have been hard for Catherine to find it. She heard from relatives that they dined there a few times and muttered, I thought Mary was just a waitress at some small restaurant. Catherine was ready to laugh it off, but then Henry shifted the focus to me. Is Mary okay? I heard she's not feeling well. She shouldn't be cooking for all these people if she's sick. Exactly, Catherine. Did you force a sick Mary to cook? Why isn't she resting in her room? Did you really just make her cook and then send her home? As the questions piled on, Catherine seemed to break into a cold sweat. That's when my husband showed everyone the message I'd sent before coming home, revealing Catherine's harassment. The relatives were outraged. Despite their long journey, they left, and Catherine kept angrily calling me. While my husband was explaining all this, Catherine was yelling obscenities at me. I couldn't help but laugh at her barely audible shouts of, Come and apologize! I promise never to return, so let's just cut ties, I said. A few hours later, my exhausted husband came home. He'd also decided it was impossible to continue relations with Catherine and had cut ties. Even though I said we're cutting ties, she might still show up. Make sure the doors are locked, he warned. I double-checked the locks on the doors and windows before going to bed. But the next day, Catherine showed up at the restaurant where I work. Even though we hadn't opened yet, she barged in furious. My grandpa, thinking it was a robbery, was met with Catherine yelling, your granddaughter is a terrible person. She has no manners. Amidst her nonsense, I tried to intervene, but my grandpa calmly looked down at her. Annoyed, Catherine slammed down a menu. From now on, I'll educate her as a daughter-in-law should be. As compensation, let me eat here for free. Forever. What are you talking about? This is nonsense. Bring me some water. I'm going to kick her out, my grandpa said. Stunned by her absurdity, my grandpa shrugged and turned to the staff. Catherine snapped at them. What are you doing? The customer is always right. If you claim to be a god, act like one. I'll handle this troublesome person. Mary, go receive the vegetables. They might be waiting. My grandpa instructed me. Just as I was about to head to the back door, Henry appeared. Good morning. It was noisy and no one was around, so I let myself in. Henry said. Catherine was startled by Henry's sudden appearance and finally quieted down. Henry is actually a farmer and a longtime business partner who delivers produce directly to our restaurant. He also often brings us extra produce that doesn't meet commercial standards. I wanted to be hospitable to Catherine because she's a good relative and an important business partner. Catherine, now alert, started yelling more nonsense about how terrible my grandpa is, but Henry wasn't having it. Angry that his friend of many decades was being insulted, he told Catherine, You'll never get produce from us again, effectively cutting ties. Catherine shrieked insults at Henry and stormed out of the restaurant. Later on, David and Catherine divorced. She showed no signs of remorse and continued to badmouth me, my grandpa, and even Henry. David had reached his limit and kicked her out. After that, Catherine repeatedly tried to force her way into our home, demanding to live with us. But we had good security measures, so she couldn't get in. We ignored her while alerting the authorities. Eventually, she left, perhaps due to neighborhood gossip. Once, she stayed until the police arrived but fled when approached by a burly officer. We haven't seen her since. Now she lives in a cheap apartment and works a part-time job to pay rent. She keeps complaining about how miserable she is, making it hard for her to fit in at work. She's struggling with her new job since she's always been a homemaker and seems to be under a lot of stress. She's barely making ends meet and has been asking relatives for money, but everyone is ignoring her. All her voicemails and messages go to my husband's phone, which we've set to block her calls. Life has been peaceful since. Six months later, I found out I was pregnant. Maybe it's because the stress from Catherine is gone. But my husband David and my family are all thrilled and eagerly awaiting the new addition to our family.